Hi, this week we will study torque. When two or more forces act on an object, we generally observe two effects. First one, the object's center of mass translates, or the object rotates about an axis. Center of mass is also known as the center of gravity. It is a unique point in an object which can be used to describe the response of external forces and torques. It is the point where object can be balanced in a uniform gravitational field. For an object to be at static equilibrium, we must meet two conditions. Sum of all forces acting on object is equal to zero, and sum of all torques acting on object is equal to zero. Torque is also known as a moment of force. By definition, it is a tendency of force to cause a rotation of object. The torque is a cross product of R and F, where R is a distance from the axis of rotation to the point where the force is applied and F is a force. Furthermore, torque is equal to RF sine theta, where R is a distance from the axis of rotation to the point where the force is applied, F is a magnitude of the force, and the theta is the angle between F and R. The one important thing that you need to remember is that only tangential component of force causes a torque. So for this example here, if this person pulls on this end here in this direction, there will be zero torque and then there will be no rotation. On the other hand, if this person pulls in this direction, the torque will be produced and then rotation will happen and the torque will be equal to the R, it's a distance from the axis of rotation to the point where the force is applied, times F, magnitude of the force, times sine of the angle between R and F. The torque acting on object will be positive if the force is causing counterclockwise acceleration and then torque acting on object will be negative if the force is causing a clockwise angular acceleration. So first let's talk about everyday examples of using the torque. When you go to gym, when you do curls, you're lifting the weights and then you're producing torque around your elbow. When you're opening the door, you're producing a torque around the hinges here. Or where you use a wrench, you're also producing a torque. So you're applying force on this end here and then this is a lever arm, it's a perpendicular distance. So torque produced here is going to be equal to the magnitude of force times this lever arm. The everyday example of torque is also wearing a high heels. When you wear a flat shoe, there will be a vertical upward force at point A and point B. And the weight of the person will be evenly distributed across the foot. In a case when you decide to wear high heels, the upward force at point A here will have a less magnitude than the force in the case when you have flat shoes on, while the force in this direction at point B will have a higher magnitude compared to the case where you wear a flat shoe. So in this case here, if you set your axis of rotation to be at point A, you will have two forces producing torque on your foot. One is a gravitational force, it's the weight of the person in this direction and another one is a force at the point B in this direction. Now since for the case when you have high heels, the force at point B has higher magnitude, the torque produced on your foot by this force at point B will be higher than the torque produced 
in the case of flat shoe. So this is the reason your feet hurt if you are wearing really high heels. Now we will move on to example that depicts the situation you will have during the experiment. You're going to have a torque bar that's inclined with this angle theta b or theta c. This angle you will measure at the protractor at point b and point c. The force fd and fa will be measured uh, on the spring. And then the protractor at point D and point A will show you the angles theta D and theta A. The distance from the left end to point A is going to be labeled as XA. From left end to point B is a XB. From the left end to a point C, XC, and then similarly to a point D is going to be called uh, XD. So first you're going to draw a forces free body diagram. So you have force FA in this direction, FD in this direction, and then you have a force due to gravitational acceleration in this direction. It is important here to remember that protectors measure angles between the torque bar and the object attached to them, in this case springs. Since our torque bar is inclined, these angles theta d and theta a are not the same as the angles measured with respect to the horizontal x-axis and vertical y-axis. So the first what we have to do here is correct these angles at point A and point D and write their values with respect to the horizontal x-axis. So our angle theta A prime here with respect to the horizontal x-axis will actually be theta A plus the angle of inclination theta C here and then theta D prime here would be theta D minus the angle of inclination theta C. So now when we have corrected angles, we are going to use these angles and write down the two conditions for static equilibrium. The first one states that sum of all forces acting on this torque bar should be equal to zero. So then in x direction, we are going to have x component of the force Fa. It's going to be minus Fa cosine theta A prime. And then x component of Fd plus Fd cosine theta D prime is equal to zero. Now in y direction we are going to have y component of Fa force plus y component of Fd force minus mg equal to zero. So Fa sine theta A prime minus mg plus Fd sine theta D prime is equal to zero. And the second condition is that sum of all torques acting on this subject is equal to zero. In order to simplify our calculations for torque, we are going to set that the axis of rotation is at point A. Since the torque is the distance from the axis of rotation times perpendicular force, at point A, torque is going to be equal to zero. The second term in this equation is a torque due to gravitational acceleration. This torque is going to be negative since this force mg is causing this torque bar to rotate clockwise. So by definition, torque due to gravitational acceleration is going to be the distance from the axis of rotation to the point where the force is applied. That distance is labeled as xcm times the force mg times the sine of the angle between two of them. And this angle here is going to be 90 plus the angle of inclination. And the last term here is a torque due to the Fd force. So it's going to be again the distance from the axis of rotation, that's this distance from point A to point D, is going to be equal to Xd minus Xa times the force, force is Fd, times the sine of the angle between distance and the force, and that angle is theta d. Notice here that this angle is not corrected angle. It's the actual angle that you measured. Now when you have these three equations, you can solve for the mass of the torque bar, 
you can look for the position of the center of mass or any other unknown quantity. It is important for you to understand that this is where physics stops. From now on, everything's math. From now on, everything is just simple calculations. So, on the beginning of the experiment, you're going to measure the angles theta A and theta D, and you're going to record the values for the force F A and F D. At some point of your experiment, you will be asked to theoretically calculate values for F A and F D. In that case, you're going to use two, two equations for the sum of all forces acting on object is equal to zero. And then you're going to symbolically solve for F A from the first equation. Then you're going to plug in the value for F A to a second equation and solve for F D. Then you will go ahead and compare the values that you theoretically calculated to ones that you recorded. Now I will show you the actual setup for this week's experiment. So this is a setup for torque experiment. You have this frame here. So once you, once you start your experiment, make sure that all these are tight. Same here. So on this frame you have suspended torque bar on the um, on these springs okay so basically the to record the data for this um, to take the data for this experiment is going to be real easy first you're going to take off this torque bar place it on the table and then you're going to use the ruler and measure the total length of the torque bar. Then you're going to measure the length, the distance from the left end to the point where these knobs are holding these protectors, okay? So this is going to be point XA, XB, XC, and XD. If you're not sure that this uh, yardstick will give you proper measurements, you can use the this clear ruler. Okay, so once you're done with measuring the distances, return the torque bar suspend it this way and spread these um, springs. Make sure you don't spread these springs way too much because we want to be able to read the values for the, for the forces. So this is point A, this is point D. You're going to measure this angle here and record it. This is going to be our theta D, theta A. So we are measuring the angles relative to the torque bar from the outside, okay? So for instance, in this example here, this angle is 60 something degrees. And then this angle here, theta D is 70 something degrees. And then also you're going to record the inclination of this torque bar. That's done by simply looking at these two protectors here. So if the torque bar is leveled, these two protectors here will show 90 degrees angle. Since the torque bar is not leveled, so as many degrees as you are away from the 90 degrees mark, that's your inclination. So in this case, it is around four or five degrees, okay? Then you're going to record the value for FA, reading it from this uh, spring here, and then value for FD, reading it from this spring here, okay? Then you're going to follow the steps in your laboratory manual and uh, calculate the position of the center of mass for the torque bar, cal calculate the mass of the torque bar, and then um, using the equations, recalculate the values for uh, FA and FD, and then compare your calculations to the actual values that your springs showed. On the end, when you're done with all that, the last part of the experiment is you're going to release this side here. You're going to put this, we call it edge knife, on, tighten up, and then suspend it on this 
base here we call this edge knife support so then again you have here you're going to read fa you're going to read theta a this is your theta b or theta c this is your inclination for the torque bar and now this angle is much much higher so for instance here it's around 30 degrees you can't measure this angle here but you can say that the uh, response from this edge knife here will have a vertical component force and horizontal component of the force. Then again, you're going to use the conditions for the static equilibrium, which says that some of all forces acting on the bar and some of all torques acting on this torque bar are equal to zero, and then calculate the values for the vertical component of this force and horizontal component of this force. Once you're done, you're going to take this edge knife off, return it here, and then return the torque bar to the position where you found it. This is all for this week. Thank you.